Good afternoon. Welcome to Montana. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't know that's where we were. Oh, I know. Oh my gosh. Well, I was like gonna, you know, Uber here because it's so much cheaper than parking. And I'm like, what if my Uber driver like doesn't know how to navigate? anything slippery and I crash and die on the way to CRS <laughs> even though it's only two miles from my house I had like all those thoughts in my head but I made it here I survived it's so good. it's all good <laughs> and you have can you see yay never, never ending sky. sky yeah talk about, I'm interested in uh, we'll talk about later why. Um, <laughs> I'm interested in the title. Okay. Um, where, the, where did that come from? That, that concept of sky. Mm hmm. It, well, it's actually a lyric from one of the songs on the EP. It's called Tumbleweed. And um, and the lyric is, uh, and we'll fly through a never ending sky, and we'll never have to wonder about the things we never tried. And um, we, uh, it kind of popped out at me right away as, as a title option because I didn't I, I don't really like naming my albums after songs I kind of like it to be its own a, a different thing so yeah that's where that came from and as I was saying as we were prepping for our chat so I want to talk about creative curves you have your album ready artwork's done everything's done it's ready to go out what does that feel like that before like Okay, it's going to be on iTunes at midnight. <laughs> what are you feeling? A lot of things. A lot of things. A lot of excitement. A lot of relief. And um, <laughs> just relief that it's done because a lot of times the process can, can take a lot longer than you think. And you inevitably you run into issues that you didn't you know foresee and a lot of times they're minor but you just get like a bunch of minor issues like this person didn't finish that artwork on time or the song didn't get mixed you know it's just stuff like that you that you got to kind of roll with so relief that it, it finally is done and um and definitely um a little bit of um terror <laughs> like if people are gonna like it you know because um um, inevitably, there will be people who don't love it the way that you do and don't see it or see you the way that you do. So you got to be prepared for that, too. <laughs> and how do you, because I think that's one of the main struggles, and it's, this is true for everybody at every level. So this, sorry to say it's not going to get it. <laughs> um, how do you filter that feedback? Because you can't let everything in because you would go crazy Yeah. 100,000 opinions. That you have to stay open to the constructive criticism that's actually going to help you get better. Definitely. So how do you filter who gets who gets to say? Yeah, it's well, it's very difficult. It's very difficult, and it's something that I have to constantly work on balancing, because um, I I tend to be a very receptive person. Um, I I just receive everything that everyone puts at me, um, even sometimes when I when I shouldn't, and to the point that I get exhausted. And um, so then I've also tried going well. I know it's best for me, and I don't you know need any of these other opinions. But that that's not right either. So it's a balance between being open to change and to the possibility that you are incorrect and also um, being confident in in what you have and who you are it's definitely a balance and um, one thing I, I actually have been have really been kind of processing lately is the concept of of uh, someone who like like a mentor type or friend type person who loves you and you love them and they have the best interests for you but they may not necessarily see what you see in your um, in your project or in your you know your vision for yourself and um, that's another thing that really has to be taken into account too because you might trust this person but they still might not see what you see so their input isn't necessarily the best so you gotta be able to, you know, see, you know, yeah, see what to take in and what to go. Okay, I'm just gonna follow that away. <laughs> so the feedback that you take on board the most is gonna be feedback of people who are able to take your perspective. Yeah, sometimes and sometimes not. Yeah. 
Yeah, someone who sees the vision. Because there's, there's, um, there's people who have very different opinions than me, yet um, music-wise, but yet they, I think that they see the vision for myself. So it's, it's just trying to, and at the end of the day, just checking in with yourself and seeing does this best serve um, you know, my, my musical purpose and, you know, myself, my being. And, um, so, and it can come from, it can come from anywhere. It can come from people you don't trust. It can come from people that don't like you. So you just gotta be, you know, a balance of open and on guard for all things at all times. <laughs> Welcome to life. <laughs> That's why I said Yep. So as we said, like, if you're being creative, that automatically means being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Which means if you're going to do it, if you're still going to do it, that means you're being courageous and brave. How do you handle all of that? Um, well, I just, I, I've been um, lucky that I have always just... I've, al I've always done music and I've never felt that I shouldn't do it. I've never felt that I, I shouldn't put myself out there. So I've, I've been very fear fearless in that regard since I was a very young girl. I just knew that this was my mission and I knew that I needed to put, put music out there. And um, as, I, as I've gotten older, I've, um, you know, kind of going back to the previous question, just become more aware of, of letting in criticism and opinions and and blocking and knowing um, how to to best you know best direct the, yeah. the project <laughs> yeah kind of walk that path of understanding oh I still have things to learn because we all yes it's never, it's never over no yeah it's never done. Um, still having things to learn but at the same time holding on to but this is still what I want. Yeah, yeah, and that's the hardest thing. I, I um, two years ago, I went through a moment, um, actually right right before this record released, where I really um, just kind of lost my voice because I, I went through a phase where I let so much in that I, I really started to doubt myself for the very first time ever, and it was terrifying. It was terrifying, but... Um, it was it was good also because it allowed for a shift of consciousness and and it allowed me to look at myself and see kind of objectively areas where I needed improvement, which is always scary when you can look at yourself and be like, oh gosh, that that needs work, that needs work. But it also allows for you to move up. So and um, uh, so yeah, so through that I kind of refound my voice. And I mean, it was crazy. I was I was actually having physical voice issues too because I had you know had lost my put so much my voice and um, but coming out of that I, f I found it again stronger than ever and um, and even now I feel myself having another shift where I'm able to look at everything and be like okay these are the places that need work and I can see clearly what needs to be fixed and moved and the game upped so it's it's scary again but this time around it's you know it's more empowering because I'm going okay I know that I can come out of this it's still scary but but yeah. good I know that it is good yeah that's exactly that's the thing that I was <laughs> for when I was doing all of that work uh -huh. you thought oh I'll get to a place where you know, being vulnerable will feel okay no you know that, that place does not exist yeah yeah <laughs> it's not my job but what you're describing now to me that's the work of mm -hmm. not just being an artist but being a human being yes you know like that's the work like yes Staying self-aware. Mm -hmm. um, here's the things that maybe I could do a little bit better, or maybe not. Maybe it's not even a, a thing of better. Maybe it's just different. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. it's if I just mm -hmm. do this yeah. differently, rather than that judgment of better. Right? Yes. So yes. This case, it's not a, a question on here, but <laughs> now that I'm interested in this, because uh, I think you think about this stuff. When I work with clients, one of the things we work on is when you make decisions for your career. You need, it's a very simple formula. 100% honesty, 0% judgment. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How do you do the second part? <laughs> it's really hard. It's very, very hard. hard. Very Both of those are very hard. hard. Those are very hard. Well, I um, I try to leave. I try to leave my ego out of it out of everything because it's so easy even as, as simple as walking into a writing room and you're so attached to this 
concept you have for a song that you bring in and you're so attached to it going a very specific way and you walk into the room and maybe your other writer or writers you know see it going a different way and you really have to be open to the possibility that another way might be stronger and might serve the song better than this concept that you're so attached to so it's leaving the ego at the door and um i tr- i have been have been working on this a lot this past year and a half is to not judge something good or bad it just is and um and that's been and that's something i really just in the past few months have started to get a better handle on like when i look at things like even you know things that uh, six months ago I would have been like oh my god drama panic like SOS like now I'm like okay it's not bad it's not good it just is and we're gonna you know figure out you know where to go from here and um, definitely helps with um, keeping stress levels down (laughs) yes yes noticing what's going on without judging it, Mm -hmm. um, which is something I work on a lot with people, because mindfulness to me is not about, you know, let's sit in a room and meditate. Yeah, yeah. That's that's not what everybody wants to do. If you want to do that, great. Yeah. That's not everybody's thing. But just that mindfulness of, hey, I'm noticing what's going on, whatever that is, whether it feels comfortable or doesn't feel uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. I'm noticing it, but I'm not stepping into that and judging myself for it. Yeah. what was it that triggered you to think, hey, you know, maybe I should work on that? Like, what, 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 what um, that, maybe, they, maybe it's not one thing, maybe it's a range of It's things. definitely a, a series of things. I am, um, I got, I started practicing yoga about, I think, four years ago, four years ago, I was diagnosed with Lyme's disease and I became very ill and um, I couldn't do any physical activity. I used to like kickbox and I was very physical and I couldn't do anything. So um, I went to yoga because it, I thought that it was, you know, a chill workout kind of thing and um, <laughs> which not necessarily, but I discovered um, so much more out of it and um, since then I'm, I'm now Lyme free I've been Lyme free for over two years um, I went through some very extensive treatment for that which yeah. I don't need to get into but I'm Lyme free now and um, but I've, I've kept practicing yoga since then and, and that's been a, a wonderful practice because the whole you know the whole idea of that is to not judge whether something is comfortable or not comfortable feels good or doesn't feel good it's not good or bad. It just is, yeah. and it's so gonna so and it's on. gonna keep it's, moving it's forward. Right <laughs> Your job is just to breathe. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and I I definitely try to apply that to my music and my personal life because it's so easy and everything to get to get caught up in all of the different things people say and it's and I still catch myself when people say things like well I don't like that that song or I don't think that was a good business move I go oh no like what but you know you have to kind of just check yourself and be like just because someone else doesn't agree with this doesn't mean that it's wrong and just because I agree with it doesn't mean that it's right (laughs) so it's it's a constant balance and a constant journey but it's awesome. It's all. It's all really awesome. <laughs> I, 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 I touched on it a little bit already, like the anxiousness when that shows up. Um, this is a slow business. Like everything you try to do, like you have to wait for the person to do the artwork, and you have to yeah. wait for the mix, and you have to wait, 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 wait. Uh huh. How do you handle the need to do this stage? Um. Right well, usually I have so much going on at any given time that it's not really that hard because I'm like never sitting like twiddling my thumbs doing nothing. So it's, it's actually is that part of it is not that difficult because if I'm not, you know, working on a, a record and kind of directing it's, it's, it to completion, I'm writing or I'm, I'm calling publishers or I'm out networking. I'm trying to write with new writers. I'm, you know, booking shows for myself. So I'm so busy that I never, um, I mean, I get impatient, but I always have a pretty clear um, idea of the time frame of things. So I'm, I'm, I'm not too often surprised by the length of time. Sometimes, you know, it's, it, things will sneak up on you. But for the most part, I have a, a clear vision of about how long it'll take things to kind of, flower. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
And when they don't, is that when your patients show up? When you think, okay, you know, I've, I, I've got this goal, and it, it's, it's going to take about a good six months of work, and then really it takes a year. Mm -hmm. um, that's that is when the exhaustion <laughs> kicks in because <laughs> I've had a couple of I mean a few projects and ideas that I've um, have have tried to make happen in the past six to nine months and um, and they didn't work yeah. and um, at all like there's you know that thing is probably not gonna happen yeah. um, and um, <clears throat> that's is really disappointing it's really disappointing and it's exhausting because I, I always have a an attitude of a of an eternal optimist. So when I decide I'm going to do something, I go, "This is going to work," and there's no other there's no other outcome. Like it might turn out differently, or it might take longer, but this is just going to work. Right. And then um, when things don't work, because I get a no or whatever, you know, um, it's definitely it's definitely difficult, yeah, yeah. and you can feel everything kind of go. Oh just like collapse I'm like now what do I do but then I just get up the next day and you know start brainstorming new ideas and yeah. just keep moving forward <laughs> and do you that process to get from that oh no this sucks this is hard to okay now I've learned my lessons and I'm moving forward what happens in between like are you the person who kind of you kind of need to beat up on yourself and kind of berate yourself or are you the um, person who does that for maybe like an hour and then I need on. usually my my process is just like I need to have an emotional re release like I, I don't spend a lot of time beating up on myself um, sometimes I do a little bit but I'm, I tend to not have that many negative feelings towards myself but I need to just like cry like for hours and like <laughs> sleep for like 14 hours and like eat a whole gallon of ice cream and then drink a bottle of wine and then like 48 hours later I'm like okay <laughs> let's go back to the gym <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> so that's that's kind of it's definitely a, I need to have an emotional release to just kind of cleanse myself of well that didn't work and next <laughs> When, you're, when you get to that moment of, oh no, you know, I, I did something, maybe I wasn't as patient as I should have been, or maybe I made a decision and it didn't really quite, it turns out it wasn't the right thing for my career. What usually gets you to that place? Is it patience and experience, too, being too eager, anxiousness? What, what, what precedes yeah. decisions that turn out? Um, sometimes, sometimes it is... Um, Sometimes it's it's totally out of my control. Sometimes it's one of those things where you just have to try it because you've never done it before and you don't really know what the outcome is going to be. So you just got to try it. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes it's it's um, I'd say about it's about half that and about half me not listening to my voice when I knew that it when I heard it, but I doubted it and I doubted myself and. Um, made a decision against it and um, nothing you know like tra terribly tragic has happened but just little things where I've been like you know I, I knew that but I put other people's voices before my own you know that kind of thing but sometimes too it, um, you just got to try things and sometimes it's like wow that was like totally was like <laughs> out of left field but <laughs> that you just you know got roll with <laughs> And, that's, and I think it's, that's just true what you're saying right now. It's true whatever your career is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this applies to all humans everywhere. Whatever it is, that's, that's the thing. Because that, that's something that's coming out more and more and more is the, um, I'm interested in that, in how people make decisions. Um, so, which is why I was very particular about who I was speaking with this week, because I wanted to talk to people who I knew who They've thought about this already. Because if I'm the first person to ask you, you're going to be like, oh, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Next question. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's why I was kind of, you know, choosy. <laughs> ah, yeah, thanks for picking me. Like, well, it's based on uh, this conversation from last year. Like, this is definitely, you've already done this mm. work. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. When I talk about it. Um, is that something you consciously worked on, or are you more naturally that person? Who can be reflective and, and think about things. Um, I think that I, I think that early on as a as a kid, I that that's my natural um, tendency. 
and then um, kind of into my later teen years into early ish 20s I kind of got clouded and now I feel that I'm coming back to that but I think that I I'm naturally a very reflective person and I always as a kid I always would always think about like what the other kids were thinking and feeling and like like well and I'd say things something like you, you know like everything I'm like oh no did that hurt their feelings or why did that person do that that might have hurt that person's feeling like I was always always like obsessed with that as a little kid um and um so it's in and into my adult life I carry that into oh no like I'm tiptoeing around everyone else's feelings which isn't bad you want to be aware but you also have to learn you know to protect yourself and put yourself first too so that you can in turn take care of people exactly <laughs> and we'll end on something a lot lighter okay I think we did this last year I'm not sure I can't remember um, if you were to ha- to put together a record that's like the soundtrack to your life with songs that oh no he did do that with songs that you grew <laughs> up with songs that are important to you because I have a couple of songs that are like my friends so yeah I don't have songs when I need them uh huh um, what makes the record? Oh gosh! Wait, how many do I get to pick? Oops, whatever. Just whatever. It could be okay. A box set. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, I love. I've been listening to um, "Heart of the Matter" by Don Henley like nonstop lately. I just like. I'm. I love the Eagles and Don Henley and Glenn Frey. Oh, oh my God! I was so devastated and shocked. Like, oh, me too. Uh, oh my God! But um, um, "Heart of the Matter." Peaceful, easy feeling. That's just like feels like home to me. Um, oh my gosh, what else? I love. Um, oh my god, I saw Steven Tyler last night at the Big Machine party, and it was so cool. And he sang "Jaded," and I love, I love that song. I'm a big, big Aerosmith fan, so I'd put that on my list. Um, and he was amazing, and I love him. And, um, oh my god, what else? Landside, Stevie Nicks. It's one of my all-time faves. Um, what else have I been listening to? Patty Griffin. I love all Patty Griffin. Let him fly. Um, that's probably, I don't know, I could keep going. I could keep going forever. Uh, but yeah, those are, those are my tops. Those are my tops, I'd say. <laughs> Thank you.